As you know, I'm a trained medical doctor. I was trained at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School of London University. I had the honor and the privilege of being selected as one of the uh, resident doctors of my own university. And then I had the extreme honor of being one of the last students of Sir Alexander Fleming who discovered penicillin. Mm. I'm telling you this to yes. let you know that I was brought up in scientific environment of medicine. So when I discovered that water has medicinal properties, I realized that this uh, topic was never taught to me at the school and I became curious. So I continued to research the medicinal properties of water and two year, in two years and seven months, I treated over 3,000 people with peptic ulcer disease with water successfully. And I made a report on, on this discovery and it was published as the main editorial of the Journal of Clinical Gastroenterology in June of 1983. And New York Times picked up the article and uh, commented on it and it was syndicated all over the world announced so, to the world that water had medicinal properties. Let me just ask about that study uh, where you got 3,000 positive cures. Yes. How, how many were the number of people in the study? Oh, there were lots of people. Uh, 3,000 cures was every single one who tried the water got cured. Oh, so 3,000 of 3,000 got the cure? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. This is the important yeah. thing. Sure. Because then I came away with the understanding that these people were just thirsty. I was quenching their thirst. And we in medicine had labeled thirst as a disease. So this was the challenge before me. Oh, thirst uh, is considered a disease? Well, in modern medicine, yes. That's what they are doing. They're treating all these so-called diseases of dehydration with medication. That right. is why we have the sick care system. That is why we have a... Uh, so-called sick care system that is costing this nation, American people, 1.7 trillion dollars every year and it's rising to 12 percent every year. Well, because, wh because we in medicine never understood water, never realized that water is important and we always thought that it's a solid matter that dissolves mm -hmm. in the water in the body that's important. So you helped to change the paradigm from thinking about the solid or solutes to the solvent. That is correct. That's, in 1987, I presented the guest lecture of a cancer conference under the title of Pain and Need for Paradigm Change, explain that the diseases of the human body occur when the body becomes dehydrated. That dehydration is the origin of pain and disease in the human body, including cancer. And uh, this shocked the scientific community. Yes. It, it really uh, uh, shocked them to total silence at the conference. But one by one afterwards, they came and thanked me for this information because I had explained to them, it's not this one item, one particle or another particle that causes the disease. In my approach, it's a system upheaval. Mm -hmm. A system, when a system is not functioning, it's that system, this that produces symptoms of dehydration that we've assumed to be disease conditions. So basically what you're saying, doctor, is that virtually all, if not all, diseases are really caused by systemic dehydration. All diseases are either states of dehydration, complications of dehydration, or consequences of dehydration. And water is a nutrient it is the deficiency of this nutrient in the body that causes the health problems. Depending on where this nutrient is missing in the physiological arena of the body, mm -hmm. that, that area begins to manifest the symptoms of that deficiency. And we have labeled mm -hmm. these symptoms of deficiency as diseases because water is the main source of energy to all living things. It is water that energizes all physiological functions. When you break down meat, a chunk of meat, unless water is there to break it down, that meat is absolutely useless. It has absolutely no energy for your body. Mm. It is only when it's hydrolyzed, broken down by water, that the energy of meat comes out. 
but it's actually mostly the energy of water that is given to the meat. The process of hydrolysis is a metabolism of water and the medical community has assumed that water has absolutely no metabolism. It's an inert substance. It is a solvent, a means of uh, uh, transport and a packing material. These are three life sustaining properties of yes. water. But water has three other life giving properties. The life giving properties of water are it produces hydroelectricity where you need electricity, mm -hmm. when, you, when you need energy. All neurotransmission system depends on energy produced by hydro hydroelectricity at the cell membrane of the nerve tissue. Then you have the process of hydrolysis which energizes whatever it breaks down. And then you have the uh, adhesive property of water which assembles everything together. Mm. So these are the life uh, giving properties of water that we in medicine never understood. And this is what I brought out and and I have published in my book, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. As you know, each cell is in a water environment in the same way as we sure. have uh, satellite dishes to bring information to people. Mm -hmm. The cells of the body have their own satellite dishes for watery environment. They receive uh, information. The, uh, information and they process that information. Now, in dehydration, this satellite system is shut down. All the receptors go into the cell, and the cell has no means of connection to the outside. So it doesn't recognize there is a, next, a cell next to it. So it begins to grow and expand oh. and expand. So it l breaks boundaries, and that's why cancer becomes a lumpy thing, because its receptor mm -hmm. system of the cells have gone. I see. There is a lot of... How uh, about, though, then, in rehydration? If They someone... come back. They come back. And a lot of people have actually been... And then the tumor of... and the cancer yes, cells will actually in... reduce and, yes, and there dissolve? Are, there are quite a number of uh, 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 testimonials in the book Water Cures Drug Skill of people whose cancers have disappeared. Lymphoma has disappeared. Cancer of prostate has disappeared. And so they all go because we need to study water as a cancer, anti-cancer medication. Once we do that for each different discipline, we need to have a protocol for that. Sure. But personal observations of people is that their cancers have reduced. Mm -hmm. Basically, you need water in order to survive. You need the minerals, uh, the Essential minerals are calcium, magnesium, potassium, uh, selenium, zinc. These are the intracellular minerals. If you give the body this mineral or eat a diet that contains these minerals, mm -hmm. you also need salt. For every quart of water, you need a quart, a teaspoon of salt because uh, there are two oceans of water in the body. One ocean of water is inside the cells. The water that you drink goes into the ocean inside. And the salt that you take keeps some of the, that water in the ocean outside of the cells. These two oceans have to be in balance in the same way as the Atlantic and the Pacific have to be in balance. Once you take the water, you take salt, you take these minerals, no disease will have a chance to appear. Then you need the right diet for repair mechanisms and for raw materials, for neurotransmitter formation, for creation of proteins and so on. We yeah, teach this yeah. to the school children. Yeah. We can save them from a whole lot of problems. They're Obesity? Obesity is a complication of dehydration. Uh, we can save children from complications of dehydration. Their education ability will improve. Uh, their uh, tendency to addiction will disappear because addiction is another uh, way of showing that uh, the body was short of water and we substituted. Oh, yes. When you drink water, you secrete endorphin in your body. Endorphin is the natural opiate of the body. Mm -hmm. When you don't drink water and you've hooked to that opiate, then you go and take the drugs that stimulate the opiate sensors. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. Water will help people get off the drugs. Uh, this is the book that people should read, Water Cures Drug Scale. Mm -hmm. uh, this is 28 pages of explanation of why dehydration is the origin of disease. And there are 186 
pages of how water cured the incurable diseases when the pharmaceutical drugs could not. Because of their lack of understanding of water, they've created a, an environment where the drug industry has taken advantage and has uh, converted our uh, healer's uh, protocol into a killer's protocol. Mm. The drugs that uh, are used in medicine, according to Washington Post, which is in my latest book, Water Cures Drug Skill, uh, even when used according to the prescription of the doctor, uh, make two million people sicker and kill 106,000, which makes this the fourth largest killer in the, in the, in the health uh, field. So when we realize that the f uh, we doctors prescribe this medication to kill people, which kills people, mm -hmm. obviously we are doing it in order to save them, but we don't realize that we've been really had by the pharmaceutical industry. You know, it's funny though, because you say to save people, but the doctors know better than the patients what the series, and it's always a series, of side effects are. And it, they often involve virtual liver shutdown or almost kidney failure. I mean, it's almost to that a point where the toxicity of the drugs is so severe. It, it makes one really question uh, whether the, what the doctors are thinking relative to the, the life-saving effects of these drugs. Well, Mitchell, say? unfortunately, we doctors uh, are forced by, uh, by the people, by the, by the uh, advertising of the pharmaceutical industry that yes. uh, takes the information directly to the public and says to the public, go and ask your doctor if this is good for you. What doctor is there to say, no, it's not good for you, and then be sued afterwards? So uh, basically, mm -hmm. uh, drug so industry... So the doctor's being put into this compromised position. Yes, doctor is unwittingly being used by the mm -hmm. pharmaceutical industry. As a salesman. As a salesman. Literally, yes. A sophisticated salesman. Now, you brought your findings to the AMA, to the, FB, uh, the FDA, to NIH. NIH. Yes. And they, they what really ridiculed it. They, obviously, what I propose... It drove not, them to drink. <laughs> uh, what I propose is not a money-making situation. So right. the sick care system survives and thrives on people staying sick. If they cure people who are sick, then there is no reason for their existence. So they realize this outcome, and naturally they try to push this information out of the way. But as... Uh, uh, philosophers of science have said, Thomas Kuhn, when such a situation, conflict co arises, then you have to go to the public and let the public be judged. Yes. And that's what I have done. These books mm -hmm. are in order to uh, arouse the public and inform the public that this is, this is an issue before them and they should force the government, the NIH, the FDA to uh, to look at water as a medication, begin to study it, and stop being subservient to the pharmaceutical industry that uh, enjoys yeah. killing people in order to make money.